Guys, this is the red Komodo 6K. And I finally, finally got a bit of time to shoot a video and now the kids are crying. This is Aria. Everyone, do you know what you're upset about? Do you need a cuddle? Oh, have a cuddle. You wanna tell people to subscribe? She's saying no, but just do it, please. You okay now? Okay. Well, let's start again. So, this is the Red Komodo 6K. This is Aria. She's upset, but I'm very excited to share with you that it's finally here. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my thoughts. I'm gonna share with you some of the specs and why I decided to pick this camera up instead of all the other cameras that are on the market today. And I'm out of breath. Need to go to the gym, really do. Now, if you're new to the Red ecosystem like I am, well, even with my short play with this, honestly, this is such a different beast. And if you're coming from the DSLR world or the mirrorless world like I was shooting on A7, well, even the workflow in post is super different. And to be honest, I'm still just trying to figure it out trying to experiment with different settings. So for all of you seasoned red owners, just bear with this noob while I figure it out. Now when I first began researching what camera to upgrade to, and I can tell you, I did a lot of research. You can ask my missus, she was so sick of all these YouTube reviews. But anyway, I narrowed it down to three different cameras. It was the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, the Sony a7S III, and of course the Komodo. Now there's pros and cons to each of these, but after much research, and a bunch of testing as well. So I was borrowing friends gear, uh, borrowing their cameras, and playing with the footage. I found that the way that I'm gonna shoot and how I shoot, the red was gonna work and be the best suit for my type of workflow and my needs. Now, if you're watching this and you're trying to decide what's gonna be best for you, then I'd highly suggest that you try hiring some gear, borrowing some gear, and not just listening to a bunch of reviews because what's gonna work for one person, what's gonna work for me, might not necessarily work for you and the type of way that you shoot and how you're going to be using the camera. Now the first reason was the red codec. And as you know, I've been rocking the Sony a7 III for quite a while now and I still think that camera is a solid piece of kit. I think there are a few things it lacks and one of them being the codec and that 8-bit colour. But anyway, I had a good friend of mine give me um, some red raw files to have a play with on my system and I actually couldn't believe the way that thing handled. The amount of room I had and latitude I had to be able to push and pull colors in post without the image falling apart was crazy. Now, of course, coming from the 8-bit world, there was always gonna be a huge improvement, especially considering Red offers 16-bit internal, but also the fact that I could, I could edit these raw 6K files so smoothly in my system you know, I've got a MacBook Pro, the M1 edition, and I could edit that in Final Cut with no issues at all. Now, this was a huge win for this camera. Now, I also love that this is quite small. It's like a small little cube that you can rig out however you want. And for a cinema camera, it's pretty comparable in terms of weight to how I ended up rigging out my a7 III. So the red is a little bit heavier, obviously, because when you put a V-mount on the back, it gets pretty heavy but in terms of weight distribution when it's sitting against your chest with that even with that v-man on there it just it feels really really good which also brings me to why I kind of went off the Blackmagic 6k now I also had a friend lend me his Blackmagic 6k for quite a few weeks I just hated the way that it, it kind of felt like I just don't like that it's got this wide body so it's a lot wider than this camera um, and when you put a lens on just the weight distribution feels just all wrong for me anyway now I usually like to film handheld and even after I tried rigging it in different ways, it still felt awkward. Now that's not to say that the Blackmagic was bad in any way. In fact, for the money, that thing is a steal. For me though, and my type of workflow and how I shoot, I didn't feel like it was the right thing for me. Now to be honest, I've always wanted to own one of these little red cameras. Like, I actually still can't believe that I'm holding this little thing in my hands. It's crazy. Before, even just dreaming about getting a red, it's just like, uh, no. Don't even bother because it's way out of your price range, mate. The body alone for those cameras was, you know, upward of 20K, and then you have to buy all the red accessories like, you know, monitors, their batteries, their mini mags, and they were all so expensive, and it had to be all part of the red branding, really. But now, enter the Komodo. I just love that this thing is so modular. Like, 
you can use third party batteries you can use third party monitors like i've i've ordered a small hd monitor that's coming for this really soon hopefully it comes in the next week or so but honestly they've got like different memory cards and it really makes this thing way more affordable now i love that there are so many other camera brands that are jumping on board this red ecosystem and offering third party accessories to basically build out your camera how you see fit like i've just got a whole bunch of small rig stuff on here and then and then there's the global shutter then you've got the crazy dynamic range you've got autofocus i mean autofocus in a cinema camera now for me the global shutter is quite a big advantage especially because there's no ibis in this camera and honestly i'm so used to using ibis in my sony but shooting 6k on this along with you know having the global shutter is really going to be able to help me when i pull my handheld footage into my 4k timeline and it's going to give me way more room to be able to post stabilize my footage plus that global shutter is going to eliminate that jello effect and those bent lines that you normally see on like a rolling shutter which lately i've been shooting some drum play through videos so i'm not even going to notice those bent sticks anymore now after i ruled out the black magic 6k there was always still the a7s3 which was still a really attractive investment and it did have some features that the komodo lacked for me though it came down to how i was going to use this camera and well its overall image quality and that's where the red really really sold me also after playing with some footage from the a7s3 that my friend lent me my computer seemed to be struggling a little bit with that codec and like i said for me a lot about picking a camera is about how i shoot how i'm going to be using the camera and basically how efficient I can be with all of my projects. All right, so I picked up the red starter pack and I was honestly so excited when I got this. Whoa, look at that. It comes in this nice, shiny Komodo black box. And when you open the lid, you're gonna find the launch sequence card. And under that yeah. is where the little beast in all its glory is tucked oh. away. And I was actually quite impressed at how, oh, how small this was. It's actually so small. Oh yeah, we're talking about the, we're talking about the camera, of course. <laughs> I need to go to bed. This is, this is really light. My first impressions is it's super light. Oh, that's beautiful. Anyway, inside the box, you're going to find the AC adapters for different countries and regions. You're going to find the red AC power brick. And I was actually quite surprised that Red sent me the RF to EF adapter. Now, I was under the impression that Red didn't ship with this. Anyway, that was a nice little surprise. Plus, there's some manuals. But who needs manuals, really? Now, when you pick up the starter pack, you're going to get the Canon RF to EF um, adapter, which is not just an adapter, it's also a variable ND, which is super handy. Now, you also get the Red side handle, the Red CFast card reader, you get an Angelbird 512, CFast card and you also get the PTAP cable and some time code cable that unfortunately I haven't got yet. All right, so let's have a look at some of the specs. So this is a 6K Super 35 sensor. It's an RF mount and you can shoot R3D RAW or ProRes, which is going to be great if you're doing a project and you don't actually need all those huge file sizes or the raw capabilities. And then in terms of frame rates, well, there's quite a few. So I'm going to actually just chuck them on screen right now because I can't be bothered explaining them all. All right, so it's got these two slots for the Canon BP series batteries, which are hot swappable. Um, but I'm rocking this core SWX plate, if you can see there. And then on the side here, you've got your door for where you put your CFast card. So that's where the CFast card slots into. And it's also got this integrated three inch touch screen, which I haven't taken the plastic off yet. Yes, I'm one of those guys that hasn't taken the plastic off. But yeah, that's great for navigating the camera. Plus it has the ability to control the camera using your smartphone with their red Komodo app, where you can also get a live feed for monitoring. And to be honest, this is really great technology. Like I've heard people talking about there being a bit of latency on that app, but from my play on it, I can't even tell. Now over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be running a bunch of tests on this camera, you know, having a bit more of a play with it to see how it really handles. And I'm also waiting for a bunch of things to arrive. Like I've got a small HD monitor, like I said before, that's coming, it should be here in the next week. But we're currently in lockdown, so it's been a bit hard to get out and shoot anything here in Melbourne. But hopefully we'll be out soon and I'll be able to go out and shoot some footage and also share it with you. For now though, if there are any things that 
you'd like to know about this camera, seeing that I've got it here, let me know in the comments. I'll run a bunch of tests on it for you. And if there's enough interest on a certain topic, then maybe I can make a video for that. For now though, thanks so much for watching and well, I'll see you next time. I don't, actually, I don't really know why I say I'll see you next time because I'm not gonna see you, but you'll see me, right? Anyway, you get the idea. All right, I, need, I probably need a coffee. All right, I'm gonna take this with me and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye. Love you. And also, say hi to your mum for me.